Today we're going to do a horn panel. I like to have my horns so when they set up on the wall, they set really high. So I have to take this to the vise. I'm going to put it in the vise. I'm going to use my sawzall and I'm going to cut an angle to the horns the way I want them set. I'm going to leave about a half inch behind the burr on the skull plate. Then I'm going to trim the corners off on the front. I'm going to get rid of these corners. So I don't like to use any bigger circle than I have to once I make this cut. Then we'll measure for what size circle we need and we'll cut it. But we're going to make this cut at the angle to the horns that we want it to set on the wall. We're going to put it in the vise at this time and use our sawzall to make that cut. Now we've made our cut. Our horn sets the way we want them to. The cut wasn't perfect so we took it to the grinder and ground the back down. So we got a nice even set. The set of horns will set flat now. Now we're going to take our compass. We're going to find a center point on the skull. We're going to decide how big a circle we want. Now I like my circles to be just outside the skull plate, but underneath the burrs. I don't. I don't like a circle that's too big on my horn panels. You're going to have to figure out a preference on your horn panels of what you like. Right there is the circle I like, the circle size. I'm going to lay the horns to the side. I like to use three quarter inch plywood or particle board of some type to do my horn panels on. It's a, it makes a good thick circle to screw to. We've got our mark made. Now we're going to cut our circle out. Hoping we can cut a good circle with Saza. We now have our circle completely cut out. We've got a good size fit. The horns fit the way we want them to. Now at this point we're going to drill three holes in our horns. We're going to drill one in the center of the back. Two one hole each third. In the front we got one hole, two holes, one on each side, one in the center. I like to center my horns above center, keeping the burrs towards the top. I'm gonna use screws that'll just get about halfway through the wood, or two-thirds way through the wood. If they go all the way through the woods, so if you don't have the right size, then you take it to the grinder. But I connect, I connect that with three screws to make sure it holds. Our top screw came out. We're going to go to the grinder at this time. We're going to grind that screw off flat so it doesn't cause problems. If you look carefully, you'll see my horns are above center. Right here would be the center of my board. My burrs, the bottom of my burrs are just about centered on the board. That puts the top above. That's what your panel will look like at this time. We're going to mix up a regular set paper mache. You can use a fast set if you want. I like regular set. It gives me a little more working time. I like to keep a little of the stiff side. It's just mixed with water. You can use plaster if you want. Plaster is really fast at setting up. No matter what you use, you're going to have to let it, once we get this paper mache put on and smooth out to what we need, we're still going to have to let it set aside for two or three days to completely cure because otherwise the leather, we, we cover our horn panels in leather, the leather will pick that moisture up and it will stain. So you, this project can't be started and finished in one day, it has to be laid aside and finished. There we've got a consistency. 
That's about what our paper mache looks like. Wet enough to work with, but dry enough to stay where we put it. We're just going to start putting it on. Keep one hand clean to hang on to the horns so you don't get paper mache all over the horns. Just start making a circle, covering your whole skull plate. Paper mache. Pushing it in behind the burr. You want you want paper mache around the whole skull plate. going to feather it out over the edges I just wet my hands a little so I can feather it when I'm done with this today I want this to be smooth so I don't have to do any filing or any sanding after it's dry time now saves a lot of time later. It seems every time I train somebody to do these they just throw this on it and leave it good and rough and then they have nothing but problems later. But you want to keep keep looking at your paper mache, keep pushing it around so it's a nice flat, even from side to side. You don't want no big bulges on one side sticking out. Very carefully going to feather all these edges and the reason we use this stiff is it stays in place it doesn't sag on us when we're moving it around if you mix it too too wet it'll sag on you and it'll come over the edges and you'll end up putting some more on later and sanding a bunch off so you want to be very careful how you do this at this point this is what we have. It's all nice and rounded here. Got a nice curvature up in there. We got the shape we want. Now you can use any shape for your horn panels you want. I've used teardrops. If I'm doing an elk, I do a teardrop. Deer, I just adopted the circle. When I started in the business, it's probably the simplest one to do. The fastest one to do. If you want if you want to do a different a teardrop or whatever design you want to do that's your choice at this time we take our modeling tool and we go all the way around the horn burr and we make ourselves about a 3 16 inch gap between the horn burr and the paper mache that's where we're going to tuck put our clay and tuck our leather when we go to finish it but you got to do that all the way around the horn burr and this is a very important step because if you don't do this step right away you won't get it sanded out of there later you'll end up redoing the whole paper mache so you want to make that all the way down to the base of the skull and the horn burr whatever extra paper mache you pull out of there kind of scrape off give yourself a nice Repeat that step on the other side. That's where we're going to tuck, tuck our leather edges when we finish this mount. Dampen your hands again, don't get them real wet, just dampen them. Round that off if you got any edges to it.
Like I said, we use leather. I use two different colors of leather. Some people use felt. I think felt's a cheap looking horn panel. If you're gonna do it professionally, make your horn panels look good from the beginning. Decide what you wanna do from the beginning because once you start doing one for somebody and they like it, they want the same thing every time. I still do a few in felt. That's the way I was taught. I went the first two years doing them in felt. I got guys that are still bringing me horn panels and still doing them in felt. Just one thing you don't ever want to do is touch them horns with paper mache any more than you have to because it's just got to be cleaned off later. But if you can see this right now, this is nice smooth texture. There's a nice smooth texture to the whole horn panel. There won't be much for sanding to get that nice. You can see around the horn burrs, I've got my 3 16ths of an inch all the way around the back. If you look, you can see how the horn's set to the back. The horn, the burrs are just above the circle. My leather will tuck in, it'll fill that, it'll make it look nice and even. At this point, we're going to lay this aside for two or three days until it completely cures. At which time we'll put the leather and the braid on. Our paper mache is now set up, completely dry. It's been drying for, oh, well, this has been drying for four days. It would have been ready yesterday or maybe even after two days. Right now I'm going to use a file and I'm going to smooth the edges down. Make sure I got no rough spots, everything's nice and filed down. If I have any high spots, I'll take them off of the file. You don't want to file any more than you have to. <clears throat> Be careful when you're putting paper mache on, it shouldn't take too long to file this off to what we need. like I'm good and square where I need to be or got the same side to side contours. I'm going to use a wire brush. I'm going to clean any paper mache off I may have gotten on the burrs. I don't brush them any more than I have to. I don't want to take any of the natural color out of them. I just want to take the paper mache off that got stuck to it. I'll also use a brush, take any blood stains off from when the hunter grabbed the horns. Use a towel, make sure my spot's nice and clean. I don't want this white powder all over my... Yeah, that's what we're looking for, a nice rounded spot. I always lay down a nice clean towel on my table so I don't stain the leather when I'm putting the leather on these mounts. I'm going to fit my leather, make sure I've got a piece of leather that's not got any blemishes to it. It's going to go where I want to be. i got to have it come around the back here, all the way around the sides. I need a piece that looks like that. Now that I got that, I'll lay it aside so I can find that exact piece again. I make two, a fine roll of clay. Just a fine line of clay. I'm going to go right around this horn burr. Push that right down into that space I left between the paper mache and the horn burr. That's what I'm going to tuck my leather into. Right, I've got my clay tucked in. I'm going to wash my hands off good so I don't get that clay. I'll really stain the leather. You don't want to get that clay on any parts of the leather that are going to show.
Now I've always used the suede side of the leather for my horn panels. You can use the smooth side. I've just always used the suede side. I think it, I, it adds just a richness to it. But there again, I'm going to lay my leather through the horns where I need it. I've got a T50 stapler, arrow stapler. I'm just going to put a couple of staples, probably three staples in this top. And I'm going to flip it back over, make sure we're still where we want to be. We have enough to go all the way around. I don't stretch the leather, but I make it tight. I'll come down and put a couple at the bottom. Then I'm just going to work my way up one side from the bottom up towards the top. I'm going to keep pulling it so I got no wrinkles. I don't want any wrinkles around the burr. So I'm just going to kind of pull this over. And I'll keep working it up and putting a staple in. I'm about a quarter inch from the edge of the wood with the staples. These are probably three eighths inch long staples I'm using if I'm right. Don't want to go too long, they won't go into that wood far enough. Now I'm just going to work the other side up towards the base of the burr. There, I've got my leather to that point. I always keep one good sharp scissors around just for dealing with leather. I like the tips good and sharp so I can trim my leather. Right now I'm going to make sure I leave a long enough piece. I'm going to get rid of all the excess leather I can get rid of. I'm just going to trim. Right down next to my staples. I want to make sure I can leave enough up here to get around these bases. I can lay that aside. There's what I'm going to start working around my bases with. No excess leather than I need to. It's always nice if this. I'm going to use a hammer and drive these staples in flat so I don't cut myself. I keep a small bladed screwdriver handy. Got a real small blade on it. Just a little screwdriver. Now I'm going to start on the inside piece of leather and I'm going to work my way through around the inside and come up the outside. I'm just actually going to start trimming this leather right down towards the burr with the tip of my scissors. I'm just going to leave it a little bit longer than the burr. Then I'm going to take my screwdriver. I did about an inch there. I'm going to tuck that in. What I'm doing is I'm just working around this burr an inch, inch and a quarter at a time. And I'll keep tucking it as I go. So that goes in under the burr. Once it sets in that clay down there, we just use our fingers and we push that clay back up and push the leather right back up to the bottom of the burr. We actually could leave this probably we wouldn't have to but I always put braid around my bases just for a finishing touch. I've got a few customers don't like it so you gotta be really careful doing this step. Push that up so you get a nice tight finish nice and smooth. You can use the fabric of your choice to do this. this. This can be done with felt. 
I think felt looks cheap. Most leathers, if you're going to find a leather capable of doing this project, you're going to spend four to five bucks a square foot for it. And you can figure for each horn panel you do, you're going to use at least a square foot of leather. Sometimes you'll have blemishes that you got to work around and throw away. And Now we're coming up the back. We make sure it lays over the other seam. I, I like to leave it over probably three-eighths to half inch. I can bring this the rest of this up and around. I'm gonna put one more staple in right where them two seams overlap each other. Next thing I'm gonna do is I got a hot glue gun handy. I'm just gonna put a stitch of hot glue to hold that leather on. We're gonna flip it around and we're gonna do the other side. You that don't know how to braid, I like to put a braided leather along the horn, the burrs of my horns on a horn panel. I take leather, I'll use the smooth side of the same piece of leather that I put on the horns. I'll cut myself three quarter inch wide strips, as long as I can cut them. I'll use extra, it takes about 12 inches per horn panel, but a braid, but I'm gonna do probably a 36 inch piece here. But you take your center piece, actually, you start out with three pieces of leather to braid, for those of you that don't know how to braid. Trust me, I didn't either when I started, I had to be taught. Got it laid out, lay my center one out. I'll take one outside edge. I'll take it to the center of those two, keeping them separated. I'll take the other out, opposite outside edge, I'll bring it to the center. Just keep looping over from outside to center, stop from side to side. Keep a snug pull to your leather so you got a nice snug braid. You don't want it loose. You don't want to stretch it tight because then it'll bunch up on you. Just, just keep it snug as you're coming down. Work your way completely. Now I, I actually cut my leather. When I do it, I do probably 75, 80 horn panels a year. I'll take a whole piece of this colored leather and I'll lay it out and tack it down and I'll use a straight edge on a good smooth board and I'll just use my scalpel and I'll just trim I'll trim up a whole piece of leather and I leave them attached at the top so that when I'm all done they're, they're attached to the top I just cut them off three at a time I put them in a bag store them until I need them Usually if I cut up a whole piece, I got a couple years supply of braided material cut up. But for those of you that are only going to buy one and only do a few, few panels, just cut it out of the same piece you do your panel out of, make it work. Or if I do felt, I don't do any braid along the edge of felt. Felt's just basically finished at the point I showed you and then I Put it on the panel. Right now I'm going to finish braiding this piece of leather so I have it. We now have our braid ready. We made our braid when we got the end. We just put some masking tape on it to hold the three tails together while we're getting ready for the next step. We get ready for the leather, we go back. Now a lot of times I'll let these dry for a day, overnight, and then this clay that happened to push up in the horn burrs will just pick right out real easy. Today, to finish this video, I'm going to do it right away. I didn't get much clay up in there. I'll pick out the few pieces that are up in there, making sure I don't get it on my horns. I'm going to take my braid, got my hot melt glue gun. Now 
Now I want the smooth side of the leather so there's a little contrast. I don't use the suede, I'll use the smooth side here to get a little contrast. I'll just cut my masking tape off holding my three ends of my fingers. I'm just going to put a dab of glue right back behind the horn. I'm going to set my braid right on that piece. That'll hold my three ends together. Now I'm very carefully going to put a little line of glue right below the horn burr. And I'm going to place this braid right up next to the horns where I want it to set. What we're looking for is something nice and neat and finished. This super glue really isn't holding anything, it's just keeping the braid from falling down so it doesn't take but a very little bit of super glue all the way around. Not super glue, hot glue. Get back right over the top of our other tail. We snip that tail off. We go to the opposite side. This braid just gives it a very finished look to it. Just if you're going to do this for a living, you want you want the customers to be happy and proud of what they get. There ain't no doubt in my mind. The braid on is worth five bucks more than without, maybe even ten just for happy customers. The leather over the felt, well worth the money. But you're going to have customers that have green ones and red ones at home already. And when we're done, we'll just take a piece of masking tape. We should have enough braid there for one more whole, whole panel. We'll put that back in our bag. Next time we won't have to make braid. Done with the glue gun. We're going to go pick every little piece of glue out that we got on there. If it's showing on the leather. See what the nice braid looks like around the horn burr. We're going to lay this aside real nice. We're going to find ourselves a panel. I like to use a 8 by 11. I have a guy that makes them for me. You can buy them from the supply houses. Make sure it's not got any blemishes to it. I'm going to use a hanger. Actually this one comes from McKenzie. They ship them with their head mounts or their forms. I'm going to set that so it's centered down about three inches from the top. I use an oak form. You can use walnut. You could use a lot of different woods. Right now, oak is probably one of the cheaper woods to use. There again, don't buy the veneered woods, buy the solid woods. They got a lot better, a lot nicer looking edge to them. Now I'm going to set my panel approximately where I want it. I'm going to eye where I want my holes. I want to put two holes in here. Probably about inch and a quarter apart. I'll just drill two uh, eighth inch holes. That'll set, set the sheetrock screws. I'm going to take a three eighths inch bit and I'm just going to bevel the indent the back so that my head set flat. Be careful not to go into the wood. There, that way my head will set flat. I'm going to use an inch and a half screw, that way I'll go through the three quarter inch panel, plus I'll go through the three quarter inch piece of particle board we used on the back. Now the trick comes. This is where your eyeballs have to be right. We're going to try to center this 
these horns. On the side, I use a couple different points. I use a reference point on the side here. Plus, I'll use my curve of my horn along this ear of the panel. If you got the ear of the panel, trying to line the center of this up all the way through the center. I get it to where I think it's right. I very carefully, holding the horns against the panel with one hand, I flip it over. With a little luck, it'll stay. I set my sheetrock screw. I'll suck that in tight, turn around, take a look at it. I'll actually hang it on the wall. I'll hang it on the wall and look, stand back and look at it, level the horns up so they look like they're level. This is all just your judgment. I can't teach you how to level them up. I can't teach. All I can tell you is make sure they look level, make sure they look squared, straight. You just, you just want them to look presentable. Suck the second screw in. Clean any dirt and dust off that you can. There you have a mounted trophy for a gentleman. Hang it on the wall in your showroom and contact gentleman. Hopefully he pays you for it.